Hello and welcome to a new and improved Construct 3 tutorial. My most successful video on this channel at the time of this recording is my 8 direction behavior and animation in the style of Stardew Valley. I've received a ton of positive feedback and have answered just as many questions about that tutorial since its release almost 4 years ago. So I thought it was time to revive this project and make a few improvements along the way. I went ahead and prepared some sprites to use for our project. You can find a link to these assets down in the description of this video. And as I said, the last version I made 4 years ago was modeled after the animation and movement in games like Stardew Valley. However, in this project we are going to add the 45 degree animations for walking at an angle. This shouldn't take too long to get through, it's definitely not difficult to create, so let's jump right into it and get started. Thank you for clicking on this video today. If you are not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and click that button. Give this video a thumbs up while you're at it. I always appreciate your support. Okay, I'm using character sprites that I got from opengameart.org. All the information and a link to the original artist page can be found in the description. Also down in the description is a link to the edited character sprites used in this tutorial. And you'll want to use this link if you are following along with me. This will make it easier for us to get to the coding part faster. Now this link that I am speaking of will send you to my new buy me a coffee page where I will be storing all of my tutorial assets from now on, as well as a way that you can support this channel should you ever choose to do so. No worry about these assets though, they are completely free. And I've also included the project file in this download. It is fully commented and will be free just like all the tutorial videos on this channel. More about this support page in a different video. For now, go ahead and download those sprites, save them to a folder where you know how to get to them, and we will be using them very shortly. Alright, let's get set up real quick. If you are following along with me and using the sprites that I have provided, then we will want to start a brand new project. I'm going to call mine 8 Direction. And because of the size of these sprites, I'm setting the viewport size to 426 by 240. And also because of the size of the sprites, we want to make sure that we check the box Optimize for Pixel Art. If you have a different project you're working on, the size will not matter. The code that we set up will work the same no matter what size your layout or your sprites are. But if you are following along with this video, make sure you've downloaded those sprites and make sure we set our project up with this small viewport size and optimize for pixel art. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and create that. And over in our layout properties, we can see our viewport size is that small 426 by 240. That is a 16 by nine ratio. And then if we click on the layout, we have a layout size of 852 by 480 which is just twice the width and height of our viewport. I'm gonna keep that at that value. And then I'm going to come over here and click on our layer zero in the layers panel. And I'm gonna rename the layer to game. And while our game layer is still selected, if we come over here in the layer properties and we go down to transparent and check that, it gets rid of that gray background and we'll be able to see through to the next layer underneath it, which I'm gonna create now. So over in our layers panel, let's right click, add a layer to the bottom. I'm gonna call this background. And while our background layer is selected, I'm going to double click anywhere on the layout and I'm just gonna type in tiled background and insert that. Then I'll come up here and change the size to 64 by 64. And then I'm gonna go into the grid tool and go to configure grid. And I'm gonna set this to half of our 64 by 64. So 32 by 32 and put snap on edges, hit okay. And if your grid's not on, you can toggle it on and off with this button. Then I'll zoom in just a little and I'm gonna come over here to our color picker and slide that all the way down to the black and then move the color down to uh, one of the corners at the very bottom. And then on the HSL tab down here, I'm going to set the luminance to seven. And then I'm gonna get the rectangle tool and I'm gonna set the border thickness to one and just border checked. And then because we have snapping turned on, you can see the starting point for my rectangle tool is snapping to all the intersections of the grid. So I'm gonna start in the top left, click and drag down to the center, and it makes us a little square like that. And then I'm gonna come down here to the center, let it snap to the very middle, click and drag down to the bottom right. Once we have those, I'm gonna get the fill tool and make sure that flood fill is checked. And let's fill both of those. 
Then I'm gonna come back over to the color palette and in the HSL tab under luminance, I'm gonna change that to 21. And with the fill tool, I'm gonna to fill in those. So we have a checkered pattern here. This just helps us understand where our player is on the screen. Because if we have just a plain background, then we won't know that we're moving whenever we set up the camera. Okay, now that we have our tiled background set up here, I'm going to click on the layout to bring up the layout properties and come down here to editor and I'm gonna turn on snap to grid and I'm gonna set my grid size to 32 by 32. Now when we move our tile background around, it snaps to 32 by 32 increments. So in the top left corner, I'm going to click and drag it down to the bottom right corner. And it does overlap the right side, that's fine. And that's gonna be our background. So make sure that that is on the background layer. And once you have that set up, let's lock the background and click on the game layer. And let's create the object for controlling our player. And then we'll put our player sprites in a different object. So let's go ahead and click on the layout. And I'm gonna scroll down and get a sprite. And we can insert that wherever. Let's go change the size. I'm gonna go with a width of 24 and a height of 12. And I will zoom in here. And right now I have my grid and snapping still turned on. So I'm just going to turn the grid off and I'm going to select a nice bright green color. This isn't going to matter. It's only gonna show on screen while we're testing. And then I'm gonna get the line tool and I'm gonna put my thickness at one and in the top left corner, click, drag, and find the middle of the right side and do the same thing from down here up to the middle and then grab the fill tool and fill it in. The reason I'm making it like this is so that it is very obvious to us when we are testing the game, we will be able to see exactly where it's pointing. So really you can make this whatever you want. We just need something that identifies where we are facing. We also want to make sure that in its default state, it is facing to zero degrees. Construct 3 detects degrees starting from straight to the right and then goes down in a clockwise motion for 360 degrees. So later on in the code, when we try to detect which direction we are facing, we want to make sure that we start out facing zero degrees and then go from there. Okay, let's go ahead and get the origin tool and I want it on the left side in the middle. And if you have a numpad on your keyboard, that is four. And if you don't, you can right click on origin, quick assign, and that would be left. Okay, let's exit out of that. And with that still selected, I'm going to rename this player controller. If you have not saved your file yet, let's go ahead and get that first save in. We gave the project a name up here, but we have not saved the file to our device yet. So we'll want to come up here and press the save project button. And then you will need to give your project a name and make sure it is stored in a folder somewhere where you know how to get to it. So go ahead and set up your first save and I'm going to do the same. Okay, let's click on our player controller and then come over in the properties and we're going to give it all of the controls for the player and we're going to use an eight direction behavior. So under behaviors, let's click the behaviors button, add a new behavior, and I'm gonna type in the number eight, and eight direction comes right up. I will insert that, then we can exit out of that, and then let's change some of the values over here. I'm gonna change max speed to 150, acceleration to 1000, deceleration to 3000, and then we want all eight directions, and set angle, instead of smooth, we want 45 degree intervals. And then we'll leave default controls for now. We can go ahead and play and test this. And I have a working eight direction. You see that it changes the sprites direction based on which direction or which angle we are moving. Also, we notice uh, by default, for some reason, at least for me, it has started new projects out in this integer scale. But I want the viewport to fill up the whole screen no matter how large or small we make our window. So I'm gonna exit out of that, click on the layout to bring up the properties. I'm gonna come down to project properties, view, and if we scroll down to display, here it says letterbox integer scale. I just want regular old letterbox scale. And then we can play to test that out again. And there it is, it's filling up the screen as a 16 by nine 
It's not going in integers anymore. Okay, I'm going to exit out of that. Uh, I don't like using the arrow keys to control players in games. I like using the WASD. So that's how I'm going to set this up. You can use default controls if you want and use the arrow keys, but I'm going to set up custom controls. So with our player controller selected, let's go down to eight behaviors and uncheck default controls. Then we can come over to object types in our project panel, right click and add a new object type. I'm gonna type in keyboard and I'll select the keyboard and it has added it to our object types folder. And then we can head on over to the event sheet and set up some controls. I'm going to add an event, go into our keyboard object, select key is down. And I'll click to choose the A key and I'm going to resize my event sheet here, make it a little bigger so we can see what's going on. If you want to resize your event sheet, just make sure that the event sheet is in focus and you can click anywhere inside the event sheet to make it in focus and then hold control and press either the plus or minus key to increase or decrease the font size. I'm gonna make mine pretty big so it's nice and readable for everybody on your screens. Okay, I am going to add an action to our A is down event and go into our player controller and simulate control and A is going to be left and I'll stretch that out. Then I'm going to select this whole block, control C to copy, control V to paste, and then control V to paste two more times. So we should have four all together. Let's go into the second one, double click to go in it. Let's change that A to a D. Hit done. The third one. Let's select W and the last one, let's select S. So A, D, W, S, A is left. D is going to be uh, going to the right. So we can double click to go into this action and change that left to right. And then let's go into our W is down, go into that action and W will be up. And then the last one, go in there and change S to down. Okay, we will revisit this one more time in this example. But for now, our controls are set up. I am going to right click in a blank space and add a group. And I'm gonna call this controls. And we can highlight all of these and drag them into that group. And I'm going to close up the controls group. We can play that really quick. And with my WASD keys, I can move my player around. Okay, let's exit out of that. Seems like a good time to go ahead and save again. Okay, over here in the layout, I just wanna show something. This dotted line is our viewport by default. This is where we are when we play the game. I want to be able to walk around the entire layout, but if I do that, uh, as soon as I go out of the viewport area, we lose our player. We want the camera to follow our player. So with our player controller object selected, let's go over to the behaviors and click on the button again and add a new behavior. And right here under general, we have scroll to. Let's add that. And that is all we need to do. Let's go ahead and play again. And now when we move, the camera follows us. And that's why I made this checkered background to make sure that we can see that we're actually covering ground when we move. Okay, I'm gonna exit out of that. Okay, let's get our player sprite set up now. I am going to double click on our layout and scroll down, get another sprite and insert that. Now we have a couple different ways we can do this. Once you have downloaded the sprites and unzip the file, you should have a folder for the sprites and you should have five sprite strips, down, down angle, side, up and up angle. If we pulled each one of those strips in, we would have to cut them ourselves. But Construct 3 can cut them before we import them. So for this first one, I'm going to come down here to the Animation Frames panel and right click and go to Import Frames, Frames from Strip. And then once you navigate to the folder where your saved sprites are, we can click on the Down Strip and Open. And that brings up this import sprite strip box. Well, there are four sprites to this strip. So number of horizontal cells is going to be four and there's only one vertical cell. So we don't have a grid, we just have one long strip. Direction is horizontal. 
that means we want to cut it up into four equal parts. And I have edited these strips so that they are in four equal parts. And then there's this box that says replace entire animation. If we have that checked, it's going to delete the default frame because there always has to be one frame, even if it's empty, there always has to be one frame down here in the panel. If we had this unchecked, it would just place all four of our cut sprites after that, and then we'd have to go delete it. So this just takes away one step. So I'm going to make sure that's checked and import. And there we go, I'll zoom in. We have our facing down four sprites. Okay, let's come over here to the animations panel. I'm going to right click in a blank space and we could add an animation, but we'd have to go through this whole process again. Instead, we can import directly from the animations panel. So import animation from strip. And we have the same thing we had before. This time I'm going to choose down angle. And again, there's four sprites and they'll be in equally spaced cells horizontally. And I'm going to import that. Notice that it doesn't ask me if I want to replace that empty frame. That's because we are creating the animation from scratch in the panel. So let's import that. And there we go. All four frames of down at an angle. Okay, let's do this method again. Let's right click over in the animations panel, import animation from strip. This time I'll get side and same thing. There's four frames, horizontal, import, and this now is taking no time at all. So let's right click again, import animation from strip and up is the one I'll get this time. Again, four frames, horizontal, import. There are our four frames. And one more time, right click, import from stripe, and we'll get the up angle. And that is four frames again, horizontal, import, and there we go. So you should have five animations and we can go ahead and rename these since we will need to reference them. So if we click on animation one, this is the one where he's facing down, walking down screen. So let's click in the animations property under name and highlight that and let's rename this down. And let's go to animation two and let's rename this down angle. And then to animation three, this looks like the side animation. So side animation four is going to be up and animation five will be up angle. Okay. The origin point is in the middle of all animations, uh, all frames of all animations. So we want that to be at our character's feet. So I'm going to start up at the top with our down animation and I'm going to set the Y value all the way to the bottom and our height is 31 pixels. So up here in Y, I can just highlight that and type in 31 and it puts it down at the bottom. For the X, I'm going to go eight. So your origin point should be right there at the very bottom of the frame and then our other frames, it's still in the middle, but I want this origin point to be in the exact same spot for all frames of this down animation. So on frame zero, where we set the origin point, let's go over to the image points panel, right click on origin and go to apply to whole animation. So now all of our frames have the origin point in that spot. It's going to be different for some of the frames. So I did not apply it to all animations, just this one animation. Okay, let's select our down angle and do the same thing here on our zero frame. I'm going to set the X to six and the Y to 32. And then we can go to the origin, right click, apply to whole animation. And now it's in that same spot on all frames. Let's go to side. And for the zero frame, I'm going to change X to eight and Y to 31. And then we can right click on origin, apply to whole animation, make sure it is there. It is. Let's go to up. And this one is going to be an X of eight and a Y of 32. Let's apply to whole animation. Check it. Good up angle. Let's go to X and make that six and a Y of 32 and set our 
apply to whole animation and check it, make sure looks good. Okay, our origin point is set for all of those. Okay, let's go back up to down and click on our collision box here. So it's a little weird. We don't need the extra nodes, so I'm going to hover the mouse over one of those points, right click, and set to bounding box. We actually aren't going to even need the collision box for this example, but I'm gonna go ahead and set these up just like this because it's very easy and very quick. So once we've set the bounding box to our first sprite, we can go back and right click on it again and apply to all animations. So now all our frames in every animation has the collision box covering the entire sprite or the entire frame. Okay, that looks good to me. I'm going to exit out of this and I'm going to rename this player sprite. Okay. Uh, one thing that I forgot to do while we were in there, we're going to have to select that and we can double click on it to go back in. Uh, we have this four frame animation, but if we play it, uh, it doesn't do anything. That's because when we click on the animation in the animations panel, it brings up the animation properties. The speed for mine is set to zero. Yours might be default at a different number, but regardless of the speed, I'm gonna go with a speed of six. And if we play that, it cycles through, but it only cycles through once. So we can put it on loop and now it is a working animation. Okay, let's do this to all of them. So let's go to the down angle animation and set the speed to six and check loop. Same with side, six, loop. Let's do up, speed of six, check loop. And up angle, speed of six, check loop. And we can play those, make sure they look good. Looks good to me. Okay, let's exit out of that. And of course, Always a good time to save. Okay, let's jump on over to the event sheet. And the first thing I wanna do is if we play this, you can see that uh, our controller still has its controls and our player sprite is walking in place in the down animation. So I want the player sprite to follow our player control. So let's exit out of that. I am going to set the position of our player sprite to our player control as soon as the game runs. So I'm gonna move the player sprite off to the left side here so it's not in our view. And you can place your controller wherever you want. That's gonna be the starting point of your player. So I'm gonna zoom out here and just place him you know, somewhere down here in the middle of the layout. Okay, let's go back into the event sheet and I am going to add an event go into system and type in start. I want on start of layout and let's set that position for our player sprite. So on start of layout, let's add an action, go to our player sprite and I'm gonna type in set position. I'm gonna go set position to another object. Hit next and I'll click and get player controller and image point is zero cause that's the only image point we have. Hit done and now when we play, our player is right there on our controller object. But when I move the controller object, the player stays in place because we haven't told it to do anything. So let's make the player sprite follow the controller wherever the controller moves. Once we've set its position to the controller, then we can add it as a child of the controller. So let's add an action, go into our player controller, and I'm gonna type in child, add child and we can click to choose our player sprite. That is the child that we're adding. And I only need X and Y values. We do not need width, height, angle, or Z elevation, just X and Y. Hit done. And now when we play, our player follows our controller wherever we go. Okay, I am going to right click in a blank area and add a group and I'm gonna type in start. Pretty self-explanatory there. And I'm going to drag this on start a layout block, click and drag it into our start group. And then I'm going to move the start group up above our controls. Okay, I'm going to right click and create yet another group. And I'm gonna call this one animation. Okay, so here's how this is going to work. 
In our eight direction behavior, we have it setting angle at 45 degree intervals. And in our player sprites, we have our basic up, down, and side animations. And then we have up at an angle and down at an angle. And then we can mirror those two for a total of eight directions. And they will move in 45 degree increments. So 0 and 180 will be our side animations. 90 and 270 will be our up and down animations. And then 45, 135 will be our down angle. And then 225 and 315 will be our up angle. So those are the angles we want to check for. Now when we check for an angle, checking for a very specific angle is not going to be very effective because it can be slightly off. I mean a fraction off for whatever reason and it won't detect that angle. So we're going to detect just slightly more than that specific angle. Okay, let's add an event to our animations group and let's go get our player controller. And right here under angle, we have uh, these three options and within angle will check to see if we are within a certain amount of the angle we want. So let's click on that. And by default, it says within 0 0.5. I'm just going to change that to one to make it easy. And then we can set which angle we want to check for. So let's check for the up angle first. We'll start with up and straight up is 270 degrees. And what this says is within one degree of 270 which means anywhere in between 269 and 271. So if it's a fraction off of 270, it'll be covered by this within one degree. Okay, we can hit done. So we have player controllers within one degree of 270. Let's add an action and go to our player sprite. And I want to set animation and then type in a quotation mark and we can choose the up animation. Play from beginning and hit done. And we can actually test that out. So we start out in our down animation and if I press left, right, it doesn't do anything. We don't have anything set up for that. And I press up and our player changes to the up animation. But we don't have anything set up to change it from that animation. So it's going to stay in that animation. Okay, let's exit out of that. Let's go ahead and save while we're at it. And then we can continue on setting up the rest of our angle checks. All right, let's add another event to our animation group. And I'm going to go into our player controller and within angle, within one degree of, let's go down this time. So that'll be 90 degrees. And we'll do the same thing we did up here, add an action, get our player sprite and set animation to quotation mark down, end quote and hit done. Okay, so that's facing up and facing down. Now for the rest of the directions, when we are facing either zero or 180, we want the side animation to play. We only have the one side animation because it's the same whichever direction we're facing. So we'll need to set it up to be within either zero or 180 and then mirror our sprite in our controls. So let's set up the angle check first. Let's add an event to animation go into controller within angle one degree of zero. And then we can actually highlight just that event, control C to copy, control V to paste, and then go into the second one and say within one degree of the opposite direction, which is 180. So right now, since both of these conditions are in the same event block, both of these would have to be true in order for whatever animation we're gonna run to play. So if we right click on the edge over here and make or block, now we can check is it within one degree of zero or within one of 180. So let's add an action to that. Go into our player, set animation, quotation mark, side. Okay, now let's check for the other angles. Let's add an event, player controller within angle, one of, and let's go down. So down angle is going to be 45. And then we can highlight that. Control C to copy, Control V to paste. Let's double click to go into the second one. And let's do within one degree of 135. And do the same thing we did with this block. Right click, make an or block. Then we can add the action, go into our player sprite, set animation. 
and this is our down angle in between quotations. And then one last time, we have one more check, is our up angle. Add an event. Player controller is within angle. One degree of up at an angle, which is 225. And then highlight that. Control C to copy. Control V to paste. Double click to go back in. Within one degree of 315. And then we'll need to make this an OR block. So right click on it. Make OR. Then we can add an action to that. Go into our player sprite, set animation, and quotation mark, that is up angle. All right, let's play that. So now, whichever direction we go, we're playing the correct animation. Now he's facing the wrong way when we go to the left because the default direction is to the right. But you notice if I go down at an angle to the right, it plays the down angle animation. And if I go down to the left, it's still playing the down angle animation. It's just not mirrored yet. But we want to check and make sure that all our directions are working. They are. Let's exit out of that. Let's go into our controls. And when we are holding A down and moving to the left, that's when I want the sprite to face the other way. So let's add an action. Go into player sprite. And I'm going to type in mirror set mirrored. And I want A to face the other way, so we'll have it mirrored. And then when we are pressing D, we're going to the right, and that's the default setting. So we don't want it to be mirrored there. So let's add an action to this. Go into our sprite and type in mirrored. Set mirrored to not mirrored. Okay, let's play. Now we're facing the correct direction no matter which animation is playing. Okay, let's exit out of that. Uh, if you noticed, our animation just keeps playing. Whichever animation we played last, it stays on that until we tell it to do something else. So those animations are going to keep playing no matter what until we direct it to a different animation. So what I'm going to do is add an event to animation and go to player control. Up here in 8 direction, we have is moving. We can tell if it's moving or not. If we select that, I'm going to take it all the way to the top. So that's the first thing we check for in this group. Then I'll add an action. And the first frame of every strip that we imported is the idle frame of that animation. So if we go in to the player sprite and set frame to 0, because that's the first frame of each animation, it will just set it to that frame. So this says if our eight direction behavior is moving, then set the frame to zero. But I want to know when we're being still. So let's highlight this eight direction is moving. Press I on the keyboard. That puts that X there in front of it. And that inverts it, meaning it's the opposite of what it says. So eight direction is not moving. Then we set it to zero. If we play that, now animation, and then it stops. Okay, let's exit out of that. I think we're done with our player controller object. It's still going to control our animations and our direction, but we don't need to see it on screen. So if we come over in the object types folder, in the project panel, click on the player controller object, come over to the properties and scroll down to the bottom where it says initially visible and uncheck that. Now we, we don't have our controller. And everything looks good to me. All right, let's exit out of that. Let's go ahead and save. Okay, I'm going to close up the animation and the controls group. And then I'm going to right click and create a new group and call this one player. And then I'm going to select both the controls and animation group, click and drag them down inside the player group. So now we're a little better organized. We know our player is controlled by whatever's in this group. Okay, anytime I create a camera in a game, I like to turn it into a smooth camera. It really does make a difference. And it's good practice to set our camera up this way every time. So instead of having the camera follow our player, I'm going to have the camera follow a separate camera object. So let's double click 
on the layout and scroll down to Sprite. And I'm gonna insert mine off to the left side here. I'm gonna change the size to 16 by 16. And I'll zoom in here. And you can set this up however you want. I just like doing it this way because it is something that looks familiar to me and is consistent in all of my projects. So let's get the rectangle tool. I got a border thickness of one. I'm going to click and drag a rectangle to fill up the outer frame. And then I will take a white color and the fill tool and fill that in. And I'm gonna get my pencil tool. Actually, I'm gonna get the eyedropper first, get that red color back and then go to the pencil tool. And in the middle, I'm going to just make four little dots get the origin point tool and hit five on the numpad or right click on origin, quick assign middle, and it should put it right in the middle of our red square there. Exit out of that, come up here and rename it camera. And then scroll down in the camera's properties to behaviors and add a new behavior. And that's gonna be the scroll two. Now we have a scroll two on our player controller object. So let's select the player control object in the properties, go down to behaviors. Let's click on the behaviors button, click on the scroll to behavior and delete. Okay, so now I have this camera. Uh, I'll put it over here somewhere. If we play, now we scroll to the camera being the middle of the screen. And if I put it over here, we're no longer following our player. And if I move the player around, uh, the camera no longer follows us. Okay, exit out of that. I'm going to place my camera off to the side and head over to the event sheet. Let's go into our start group. And in our start of layout, I'm going to add an action and place that camera to exactly where our player controller is. So camera, and I'm going to type in set position to, I'm going to go to another object again, and I'll click to choose the player controller. Hit done. And then we made the player sprite follow the player controller by setting the player sprite as a child to the player controller. I don't want the camera to just follow the player controller every move that it makes. I want it to have just a slight cushion so it gives it a smoother effect when moving. So we're going to set the position or update the camera's position every frame of the game. So let's add an event to our start group and go into system and type in every tick and then we'll set the position every tick of the game, which is every frame. So let's add an action, go into our camera and set position. And we want the regular set position, not, not set position to another object, but just set position. And we're going to use the lerp expression, which means linear interpolation. So type in lerp, and then we want a beginning parentheses, and it shows us we need three values. And those values are from where to where, and how much. So let's set our first value from where. We want to lerp from the camera's position. So camera dot x, because we are in the x value. So camera dot x comma, and the next value is where to. So from the camera to the player controller. So player controller dot x comma, and the last one is how much, which is how much time do you want it to take to get from the camera's position to where the controller position is at that time. You can play around with this. I'm gonna go with 0.1. Okay, down here in the Y, we're gonna do the exact same thing, but with the Y value. So lerp, parentheses, and then from the camera's Y, camera.y, comma, to the player controller dot Y, comma, and then 0 0.1 and end parentheses. Okay, that should work just like that. Let's play and you see our camera object there. And when I move, you see it kind of takes a little bit extra time to get to us and it slowly moves itself into position. So this just helps the view of the game look a little smoother to those playing it. All right, let's exit out of that. I'm going to select our camera object in the project panel. That brings up its properties. Scroll all the way towards the bottom, initially visible. Let's uncheck that. We don't need to see the camera object. Okay, now that we have the camera following us in a smooth manner, let's go back to the layout and I'm gonna set up a barrier so we can check one more part of our animation. 
So over here on the side, I'm going to double click, scroll down, get a sprite, insert it off to the side, and I'm going to change the size to, uh, let's say 32 by 32. And I'm already on the origin point, so I'm going to put mine in the bottom left corner. And let's get a fill color. Uh, I'm gonna make mine orange and then fill that in. Okay, let's exit out of that. I'm going to rename this to wall. And our snapping is still in place, so we can snap it to a specific location. I'm going to have this wall selected and hold control, click and drag out a copy. So now we have two wall objects. I'm gonna take this far left one and drag the side of it all the way down to the bottom. Then I'll take this top one and drag it all the way to the other side. And I'll zoom out a little. And with that selected, we can hold control, click and drag out a copy to the very bottom. And do the same thing with our left side here. Control, click, drag out a copy to the right side. All right, I'm going to control, click, drag out yet another copy. And then I'm just going to resize this to make a rectangle like that. I'm gonna move our player over a little and place this guy right in the middle. Okay, with our wall object selected, let's go down to behaviors in the properties panel and add a new behavior and let's get the solid. Okay, now when we play, we can run into solids. And when we come over to the far edge of the screen, uh, we are running into solids again. Let's exit out of that. Uh, I'm gonna go back into our player object. I'm gonna, or our player controller, call it up in the animations editor. And I'm going to move the origin point out, let's say right about there, an X of five and a Y of six. And then I'm gonna take our collision box and shorten it. Let's go up to our grid, configure grid, and I'm gonna say two by two and snap to edges. And then I'll turn the grid on. So now we can snap these nodes to very specific intersections. And I'm just gonna bring it in kind of like that. And then our origin points right there. So I think that's, uh, makes it a little bit more friendly as far as collisions go. Now we can uh, get closer to the walls before we are stopped. Uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> it's not perfect, but it's a little better than what we had. Okay, feel free to play around with that if you want that to be different. And that is our eight direction improved mode with our 45 degree angle checks. And that is our very quick and easy tutorial on eight direction for Construct 3. Like I said in the beginning of the video, I do have a new Buy Me A Coffee page. If you've never heard of it, it's basically just like Patreon, except that it is a little more friendly and forgiving to the person who hosts the page. I've been asked about it many times. So now I finally have one set up and I wanna make sure that you get something out of it if that's the direction you head in. But I will be storing all of my assets from now on on this page. If you just wanna download the free assets, please go ahead and do so. No donation is required for these tutorials at all. And my tutorial videos here on YouTube will always be free. All right, that's gonna do it for this one. Another way to support this channel for absolutely free is to subscribe to the channel and hit that thumbs up. Let me know that you like this video. Don't be shy to drop a comment on this video either. I always appreciate your support. Thank you so much for watching this one. Stay safe out there and I will see you next time.